Hi everybody, welcome to Meconomist. I'm down to one car in my life. For those of you that haven't been following, I just moved back to Michigan from Texas. And in the meantime, because I changed jobs, I don't have a company car anymore, which was kind of my primary car. With my new job here in Michigan, I don't travel as much. It's mostly office based, so I don't need a company car anymore. And so I don't have one. And that means that I'm just down to the Cayman as my only car for groceries, road trips, chores, errands, and of course the daily commute. So one of the joys of filming in an outdoor location as beautiful as this one is that the light is constantly changing. So I apologize for all the continuity errors that's happening. It's just because the sun is going down and there's clouds and stuff passing through. So sunglasses on, off, light changing, it's gonna happen. As a daily driver, the Cayman is actually really good. I have very few complaints about it, and the only complaints that I do have stem from sort of more traffic and circumstance than the car itself. First of all, I think the size of the car is a huge benefit to my commute because it allows me to sort of be more nimble in high traffic areas. I can slide in and out of lanes a little bit more easily than sort of your typical big SUV commuter car. Plus, it makes it a lot easier to find good parking spots because there's a lot of places that larger vehicles aren't going to be able to fit where this thing fits perfectly, especially if I'm looking to do some street parking. The power that you have from the flat six is also amazing for the commute because it makes it really easy to sort of get past those pesky left lane hogs or kind of slide out into the left lane and accelerate past people. Or for example, I have this turn when I'm coming out of my office parking lot uh, where there's a stop sign and it's a right hand turn onto a pretty high traffic road. And in like a normal car, like my Fusion Hybrid or something like that, or a, or a big sluggish SUV, you'd have to wait for a pretty big gap in the traffic in order to sort of get out there and get into the flow of traffic. But with the Cayman, given that I have a manual transmission and lots of power and plenty of torque and a smaller vehicle, I can just zip right out into traffic without needing to wait for a huge gap, which is really beneficial because I've seen people in SUVs and trucks and stuff wait at that stop sign for minutes, literally minutes, before they're able to find a gap big enough that allows them to pull out. So of course the main downside to having a Porsche Cayman as your commuter car, especially a manual one like mine, is stop and go traffic. I mean, that's gonna be the case with any car and especially any manual transmission car. So yeah, it is really annoying. I do end up doing a lot of uh, clutch work and a lot of rowing the gears. And it does get frustrating, especially after a long day of work. The last thing you want to be doing is going into first gear, out of first gear, into first gear, neutral, clutch in, clutch out, all that stuff. It is a trade-off though, because in most circumstances, I love having a manual transmission and I wouldn't trade it for an automatic any time. So when you move between states, you end up having to do a lot of shopping. And for a lot of people, it seems that they think that means they need to get some sort of big SUV or pickup truck or something like that in order to do all the shopping that has to get done when you're moving. In fact, I was able to do all of my shopping in just the Cayman. I didn't have to borrow my parents' van or borrow my girlfriend's truck or anything like that. I was able to do it all in the Cayman. Of course, like any other middle-class white American, I went to Target and I got a bunch of bedding and groceries and cleaning supplies and small furniture items, stuff like that. Filled up an entire Target shopping cart, came out to my car and I managed to fit it all, like $300 worth of groceries and other stuff, all into the Cayman, no problem. I said it before, but I'll say it again. The frunk in the Porsche Cayman is a beast. It's super deep and it always fits way more than I think it should be able to. And that's what makes doing groceries and other errands such a breeze. On a funny side note, over the past two months, I've had two different people ask me if I'm having car trouble while I've been putting stuff in my front trunk. I always say, no, thank you, everything's good. But I'm always curious what would happen if I said, oh my gosh, yes, I need your help. I can't seem to find my engine. I don't know where it went, it's gone. Although now I think about it, that would probably be an incredibly lame and embarrassing joke. But yeah, it is one of those things where people will kind of look twice when you open up the front of your Cayman and start just shoving a bunch of duffel bags or suitcases in there. 
Really the only downside I've found to having my Cayman as my only car over the past few months has been the fact that it's a two-seater and I can't drive more than one other person with me. This hasn't been an issue too many times, but for example, when I was up in Traverse City, I wanted to go drive up this really beautiful road on the Grand Traverse Peninsula that goes up to a place called Chateau Chantal, which is literally one of the most beautiful places in America. I highly recommend it. And there's this really nice road that goes up there that would be so much fun to drive on the Cayman. But I wanted to take more than one person with me. Uh, we had a group of four people that wanted to go up there. And unfortunately, I obviously couldn't fit them in here. So we had to take an SUV because that was the only car we had that fit all four of us. So maybe someday I'm going to have to get a Porsche 911 just to sort of do road trips like that. By the way, make sure you like and share this video across all your media platforms because if this video does well, I think I'm going to do a follow-up part two video where I talk about the Porsche Cayman as the only car in my life in the winter. It'll be a winter edition of this video and I suspect it might be a little bit different than my perspective right now, but we'll have to see. So on that Traverse City road trip that I was talking about earlier, uh, like I said, it was like eight hours of driving, about 500 miles, all on Michigan roads, but for the most part, really beautiful, open country roads. And I had a blast with the Cayman. It's such a great road trip car. I can't wait to go on future road trips with it. And maybe next time I'll remember to actually film something because I think I was just having so much fun driving that I forgot to even make a video about it. One thing that did happen on that road trip though was I got this giant, well, I don't know if it's giant, but a large circular or half circle crack on my windshield. So what happened was I was driving down this road uh, and I was behind this pickup truck. And then all of a sudden something, I don't know, I have no idea what it was, but something just flew out of the back of the pickup truck and slammed my windshield right there. And I swear, I almost jumped out of my seat because it was the loudest sound I've ever heard coming from a windshield. And I thought for sure it was going to shatter. But luckily, it's held up pretty fine. And you can't even really feel that much of a crack there. Uh, it's just mostly an internal crack. I will have to get it repaired. And I'll, it'll probably end up meaning that I'll have to replace the whole windshield. But it's not nearly as bad as it sounded when it first happened. In preparation for the amount of miles that I was going to put on this car, I did a few basic maintenance things that I've kind of been putting off for a while, but I just figured I should get them done now. I replaced the front right tie rod, which is about $850. Uh, I replaced all my tires, so I've got some fresh new Michelin Pilot Sports. And I replaced the oil. I did an oil change, uh, which is just sort of standard procedure. So I made sure my car was all prepped even though it was really expensive. Those weren't necessarily like repairs or anything that went wrong with the car. It's just sort of some maintenance items that I needed to get taken care of. Now, a lot of people complain about the fact that I still have my 17 inch wheels with my big fat tires on them. But hey, this is my only car now and I prioritize comfort over style. Plus, I actually kind of like the look of it. I don't know, I've seen Caymans with like 20 inch rims on them and I don't really think they look any better than this. I think if I had like a modern new 911 or something like that, then I would want much bigger wheels just for the aesthetics of it. But with the old Cayman, I actually kind of like it. I think it's kind of cute and endearing to have these fat tires on these small wheels. Plus the fat tires do make it that much more comfortable. I mean, I just did a eight hour round trip road trip up to Traverse City and back and I had zero back pain, zero complaints about the comfort even though I was driving on Michigan roads the whole time, which if you've been to Michigan you know how bad our roads are. Anyways, if you guys have any questions about what it's like to own a Porsche Cayman as your only car, feel free to leave those comments in the comments section below and I'll make sure that I answer those in the follow-up video to this one that's coming along as long as this one does well. So make sure that you hit like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Oh, and if you, if you like my Flatagonia Flat 6 Engines for Adventure t-shirt, just a reminder that you can purchase that on Redbubble. There's a link in the description below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.
Oh, by the way, I think this video is going to come out on a Monday, and I'm just going to switch to a new cadence of every other Monday starting today on this Monday. So I'll see you in two weeks.